Hello guys! Today I want to show you how you can grade your footage as a beginner in DaVinci Resolve. I will show you what to focus on and this is our before and after. I am also in the process of creating a color grading course for beginners, so if you are interested, sign up to my mailing list below this video. And now, let's move to the main part of the tutorial. And this is our clip. It comes from Artgrid, and as usual, I'll leave you a link to this website below. My clip has been shot with red camera in Redlock, that's why it looks so washed out and I will have to transform it to Rec. 709 first. But before I do it, let me explain the workflow. So let's go here to the settings and then to color settings. And here we can see that we are in standard DaVinci YRGB non-color managed workflow. When we click here, we can change it to DaVinci or ASUS color managed workflows. But I'll create a tutorial explaining the benefits of working in color managed soon. But today's video is for beginners so I don't want you to worry about it now. Then we've got a timeline color space that is set to Rec. 709 scene as a default. I am also not changing anything here. It's a standard gamut. It's not the widest. The widest color gamut is DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and it's useful to utilize it as it allows to edit with color space aware tools like the HDR color wheels. But again, this is a topic for a bit more advanced users, so don't worry about it now. And then we've got the output color space that's most likely to be Rec. 709 because that is the output for most monitoring devices. My grading monitor is set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, for example, but I've picked Rec. 709A as it will give you the correct preview on Max. And I know that most of you work on your laptops. Okay, this is not that easy to explain, um, but I hope it makes sense for you. So let's close this window and now we can move to our note tree where I've created a few serial and parallel notes. You don't have to use the parallel notes but I like to use them for my secondary color correction. So first we've got our primary notes. I always start from adjusting the exposure and the balance. And then I've got two secondary notes where I'll be showing you how to use HSL curves in Resolve to adjust separately different parts of the shot quickly without any masking or tracking. Um, this is my plan for today. And then at the very end, as we are using a non-color managed workflow, I've got my color space transform node. So let's start from changing the CST as this will convert our clip to Rec. 709 as it should be. So let's go to the effects and let's search for the color space transform. Let's drop it onto our node. And here you have to know how your clip was shot. So please get this information from the camera operator. And I know that my clip was shot with red camera, so I'll pick the right input color space and gamma, and I'll leave the output as it is. As my timeline, as you remember, is set to Rec. 709. And this is before and after. So the conversion has brought back a decent amount of contrast to the clip. But let's move to our primary correction now. I am going to click on my exposure node and remember to use the scopes while doing this. I like to look at the waveform that shows me if I'm in the right range. I will also add a link here to the tutorial where I'm explaining exactly how to read scopes in Resolve. So if you want to learn more about it, you can watch my tutorial later on. But now I will use the primary wheels to adjust the exposure. So lift adjust the shadows, gamma midtones and gain the highlights. And I will push my shadows down a bit, the highlights up like this. And then I'll adjust the contrast as well by using this control over here to sculpt the image even more. And this is before and after. So now I can see that the shot is actually quite well balanced, but we can clean it a little bit. So let's go to the balance node and let's maybe change the waveform to the parade that clearly shows that the shot is balanced properly. Only the red dominates a little bit here. Also, when we go here to the vector scope, this trace 
should be perfectly in the middle. So let's use the offset to take the red down just a touch like this. And this is before and after. It's a tiny difference. I hope you can see it on YouTube. So now we are done with our primaries and we can move to the secondary color correction. So let's click on the first parallel node and let's go over here to the curves. And first, we've got our custom curve that we can also use to adjust the exposure. I prefer to use primary wheels to do so, but this is another possibility. So usually we just create a gentle S curve here, like this. And this way I've added even more contrast to the image. I kind of like how it looks. This is before and after. So now I'll maybe move to the second parallel node. And here I'll be performing the adjustments with the HSL curves. And the HSL curves are here. First we have uh, hue versus hue, where we can basically change the color of a selected color range. We can use these dots to create our control points. But we can also click on the image to sample the color we want to adjust. And it will automatically set a custom control point on this curve. And then when I'm moving it around, this is what we're getting. But I don't want to make any drastic changes, so I will undo it. And let's move to the hue versus saturation, where we can adjust the saturation of a certain color range. So I'll grab the yellow again from my clip, and I will add a bit of the saturation here, like this. And this is before and after. So this way we've brought more attention to the protagonist. So now let's move to the hue versus luma curve. And here we can adjust the brightness of the selected color. So I'll grab the yellow again. And this is how it works. I don't need this kind of adjustment, so I'll undo it. And I will move to the luma versus saturation. And here we can increase or decrease the saturation depending on the luminance. And we have shadows on the right and highlights on the left. So we can manipulate the image by adding control points uh, accordingly. So for example, if we grab the curve in the middle, this is what we are getting. I won't use this curve today. So I'll undo it and I'll move to the saturation versus saturation. And here I can increase or decrease the saturation of the image and it works with the relation to the most saturated parts of the image. So if I move it up and down, our yellow gets more or less saturated, as this is the most saturated portion of our clip. And this is before and after. And at the end, we have saturation versus luma. And here we can adjust the brightness depending on the most saturated parts of the clip. So again, I will grab the curve in the middle and I will move it up. So you can see that we are getting more brightness in the yellow parts of the clip. We can also make it darker. I'll actually make it a touch darker. Like this. And now let's just watch the final result full screen. Thanks so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.